Welcome back to the channel today, guys, as we talk about, in my opinion, the best airing show this season, Oshinoko. Now, I apologize for the lateness of this video, guys. I do. But we're here now, and we have quite a good episode today as we begin our reality dating show arc. Now, if you guys have been on the channel recently, you know I actually did a manga video discussing this arc on the channel about how this arc is going to tackle some pretty serious topics, actually. Show the real dark side of the entertainment industry in an all too real way. But this episode in particular, we see a really good in-depth breakdown of what it really means to be an entertainer in this day and age and how the internet is crucial. And we see the beginning of our new B Komachi group. It's a great episode, so without further ado, let's just get straight into it and talk about Oshinoko episode 5 today. Now, our episode begins immediately where our last one left off, with Ruby looking for someone to join her idol group that she wants to make, as we just hear the most reluctant compliments I've ever heard in my life, as we hear glossy hair that is well cared for, a baby face that hasn't lost its innocence, a personality reminiscent of an airhead, basically a ditz. I must admit... She's the kind of girl who'd be crazy popular with hardcore otaku. <laughs> As Aqua tells Ruby, why don't you ask Kana to join the group then? As Ruby tells him, I see your point, but uh, don't me and Lolly Senpai have kind of an unusual relationship? You know, doesn't she kind of hate my guts? As Aqua tells her, maybe if you didn't make fun of her all the time, this wouldn't be a problem, Ruby. <laughs> As he adds, anyway, I'll call her over, so at least try talking to her, okay? And after that, if you feel like you still can't get along, then forget the whole thing. And it's here as we transition to Kana. She is all too pleased with herself by the reviews of her performance in Sweet Today. As we see, she even feels a little bit bashful as she reads comments complimenting Aqua. That crush is firmly in place now. And upon getting that message from Aqua in this moment, let's just say her heart starts racing a little bit. But it's here she heads to the meeting point and notices that Aqua is not alone. That excitement is instantly destroyed. As she tells Ruby, what do you want? I'm a busy woman. You only got about 20 seconds for me to listen to you. As Ruby says, you're as blunt as ever, I see. But then, with a little encouragement from Aqua, she honestly and earnestly asked Kana flat out, Kana Arma, would you be an idol together with me? Now, naturally, you would think that Kana would just instantly turn her down, but she actually listens to the request because it's such a surprise that she says, where is this coming from? As Ruby tells her, Strawberry Productions is working on putting together an idol group, and we're looking for members. I heard you were a freelancer, so... To be frank, I guess I'm scouting you. As we see that Kana is actually really surprised as she asks her flat out, Are you being serious? As Ruby tells her, yes, and this is very important. And it's here, we see how Kana realistically approaches this situation as she thinks to herself, It's gotta be a no, right? I gotta tell her no. If I become an idol, I'll lose out on jobs reserved for young actors. And my main work will be idol gigs where the old is constantly giving way to the new. Plus, if I don't find success as an idol, I'll be out of work on both fronts. As someone responsible for crafting her own image, the risk is far too great for me. But, adds, that said, this is Ruby Hoshino. There's something about her that reminds me of the genius idol, I. My keen nose as an entertainer senses the potential this girl has. But then adds, Strawberry Productions isn't a major agency though, and they don't have a track record in launching new projects. But above everything else, it's questionable if I'm cute enough to find success as an idol. As we see that she lacks just the self-confidence to do something like this, this big leap of faith. 
And it's here as she's about to tell Ruby no. Aqua gets on his knee and says, please, Kana, be an idol with my sister. As Aqua tells her, I wouldn't just ask you to be an idol on a whim. You are far cuter than the run-of-the-mill idols out there. I feel that my precious sister would be safe in your hands. As Kana insists that no matter how many times you ask, it's not happening. As we transition to this little pushover signing the papers. <laughs> As we hear, welcome to Strawberry Productions. We'll give you a warm reception. As we see that Kana is now a member of Strawberry Productions and a member of Ruby's idol group. And all I gotta say, guys, is Aqua's got that riz. He's got that riz, man. Let's leave it at that. And it's here, finally accepting her fate. Kana says, well, I guess I needed a shot in the arm of some type anyway. Really jumpstart my career again. As she adds, plus, by being in the same agency as him, we'll have more chances to work together. He's got some techniques I feel like I could steal. As she asks Ruby, so, uh, does Aqua have his next job lined up, by the way? As Ruby very reluctantly says, yes, and shows Kana that, is a, that it is a reality dating show. Oh boy. And it's here as they watch a little bit of it, just to get a feel for it. We're introduced to all the characters that are going to star in the dating show. As we're introduced to Yuki Sumi, Nobun, Nobunyuki Kamano, Nobuyuki, I really butchered that. <laughs> Akane Kurakawa. I don't know, guys. I feel like this one might be special. A little different than the others. I don't know. We'll have to see. <laughs> Memcho, who just happens to be a streamer on YouTube, by the way. Kengo Morimoto. And, of course, our boy Aqua. And upon seeing him, they can't believe it. Who is this guy? <laughs> As Kana says, yo, he's taking putting on a character way too far. As they get just a little bit heated about how friendly Aqua's being on the show. Just a little bit. <laughs> and it's here as we transition to the reality show itself. We see that Aqua is bored out of his mind here. As he says, this standard teen, teen chat where we agree with each other about everything is really getting old. And it's here we learn why Aqua took this job in the first place. As we flash back to the producer as he tells him, If you agree to this show, Aqua, I'll give you the inside scoop on I, including stuff even her agency didn't know. For example, details of her relationships with guys. As Aqua tells himself, this show should provide some clues in the search for our father. Aqua is a man on a mission after all. And he is determined to follow through. Now this next scene we're going to transition to right here actually explains how reality shows work. So I kind of want to break it down for you guys. As the show itself says, this is how this show works. As the producers tell them, you can go ahead and converse freely with each other. However, please do pay attention to the angles of the fixed cameras. When the cameramen get closer, if you're able to, It'd be a big help if you can have a chat that sums up what you've been talking about right beforehand. Basically saying that you guys can do whatever you want on the show. But when the camera's on you, we want you to play it up a little bit and kind of give the audience an idea of what you guys have been talking about. As Aqua says, dating reality shows have been around for 20 years, so a reasonable about amount of know-how has been accumulated. The style of directing for reality guarantees the show's entertainment value, while also leaving things in the hands of each individual on screen. Basically saying that it's real, but it's not real at the same time. It's artificially real. As Aqua says, man, so they really don't use scripts on these shows, huh? As one of his co-stars, Sumi, says, yeah, I really don't have an idea of what we're supposed to talk about here. As Aqua says, reality shows don't have scripts, but they do feature directing. As Sumi continues and says, you know, I'm kind of timid. I'm, I have a hard time putting myself out there and talking to people. I guarantee I'll get overlooked on this show. As Aqua asks her, why do you decide to take this job then? 
And she gives a very realistic response, saying, While the public face of my agency has a policy of not turning down any jobs, she sucks up all the work that comes into our agency, so I'm basically free year-round. I at least want to put up a struggle and get my name out there. And that's when Kabaragi got in touch with me. And that's an all too real response, guys, how some agencies just favor certain people and how other people in the same agency kind of get pushed off to the wayside and they have to struggle for any role they can get. It's very real. As she adds, it was just good timing anyway as well. I've never been in a romantic relationship before. As Aqua says, yeah, right. As she says, no, I'm telling the truth. You're way off base if you think all entertainers must be dating someone. As she asks Aqua, so you're not interested in romance yourself? As Aqua says, I mean, I am. I am a guy after all, but I've been unable to shake a past love. I haven't fully digested these feelings, even a little bit. As Sumi asks him, so did you have a crush on a teacher or something? And he says, well... Maybe something like that. And then adds, well, you gotta get over it then, don't you? As she says, I heard the couples from last season kissed at the end of the show. I was worried there might not be any quality guys here, but I might be able to do a kiss if it's with you. As we see that Aqua is actually shocked by this, taken aback. But all too quickly, we see that it's fake yet again. And it's here after she gets a great scene for the show from Aqua. As she walks away, Aqua says, yeah, you're the farthest thing from timid. <laughs> As Aqua asks himself, so this is how it is with reality shows. Huh. Fake. But it's here we're gonna transition to Ruby and Kana struggles trying to get their idol group off the ground. Because right now, they have nothing to do. Their name's not out there. No one knows them. As Kana tells her, being an idol is a job where you're at your peak for a short time and struggle to support yourself even if you sell well. And it's here in this moment we see Mayuko appear to solve their problems. As Kana says, yo, what's with the cheap camera you got here? As Mayuko says, hey, it's cheap, but it gets the job done, okay? And then adds... For new idols at the bottom of the ladder, it used to be standard to hand out flyers and perform at joint concerts. But times have drastically changed. These days, the heart of idol culture is online. It's also the best value for money for generating grassroots support. As she adds, so, you two should also start by making a name for yourselves online. And she is right on the money with this, guys. Nowadays, if you want your name out there, you have to do it online. Whether that's through social media, through something like Twitch or YouTube, like even I'm doing right now. You have to do that. You have to reach a broader audience of people because the internet is an invaluable tool in doing so. As Ruby even says, so like YouTubing, right? As Mayako says, yes. It'll be efficient if you establish a built-in audience and then invite them to your concerts, right? But it's here we see that Kana actually does have a very realistic approach to this. As she says, aren't you being a little too over-optimistic about the internet? If you put a girl like this, who just has a pretty face online, we'll only get a few thousand subscribers at best. I don't believe that, but whatever. OnlyFans is a thing after all. <laughs> Hell, even with my fans, it's questionable if we'd reach 10,000 subscribers. Besides, we'd only be able to get about 1% to show up to an offline event. It's going to be really tough going forward. And it's here Mayako says, you know, if we were amateurs, you'd be right. But Strawberry Productions manages online streamers and excels in the online segment. In fact, I've gotten a hold of someone willing to help. So I hope you learn a lot from him. And it's here we get introduced to the perv- <coughs> I mean peon. <laughs> Who is the masked strength training YouTuber. As Kana says, so this is the kind of things kids are into these days, huh? 
But as Peon tells her, yeah, I make a hundred million yen a year, by the way, Kana quickly turns her tune around. <laughs> and it's here, Peon actually starts breaking down how it is to be a YouTuber as he says, listen up. There are several techniques for gaining subscribers. I should take some notes myself. As they both say, uploading every day and already having name recognition? As Peon says, yes, that's true, but you two have neither name recognition nor the perseverance to post daily, right? And I'm with Ruby when I say that that last part hurt me. Oh man, I try! As he adds, however, there's a secret technique for quickly and easily gaining subscribers. As he says, a collaboration is the best way to promote yourselves. Collaborating with a famous YouTuber is the quickest and easiest path. And it's here we get our pretty infamous dancing scene in the episode. As Peon says, if they can keep up with me for one hour, they can reveal, reveal their faces. And guys, this scene is so freaking absurd, but I love it so much. Everyone was going crazy talking about this scene. The anime actually extends it. It's so stupid, but it's so funny at the same time. The anime absolutely killed the ridiculousness of this scene. I've seen so many incredible edits of this scene already. It's honestly incredible. They knew what they were doing making it a green screen in the background. They knew what they were doing. As Kana's just like, yo, I'm dying here. This is tough as hell. Put on these silly masks and dance, he says. Is he trying to kill us right here? But it's here we see that Ruby is having an absolute blast doing this and it's really heartwarming because as we know ruby was bedridden her whole life so to see her be able to be this physical dancing around it's honestly very heartwarming to see that being said it's exhausting and they're both done when it's done but they were able to do the challenge as peon says well done you two take off your costumes and introduce yourselves to the world as we hear i'm ruby hoshino with strawberry productions and I'm a self-proclaimed idol. And I'm Kana Arma, a self-proclaimed idol. Hello, world. <laughs> and it's here once they're off camera, Peon tells them, you know, I had been planning to edit it to make it seem like you guys lasted an hour, but you two really didn't. The viewers won't be able to see it, but the people on set sure do. It makes a good impression. I like you ladies a lot, actually. As he tells them, oh, by the way, what's your guys' group name? And it's here Kana finally gives in as she says, you can just go ahead and decide a name, Ruby. It's fine. And it's here in this moment, there's only one name that comes into Ruby's mind. As we now meet the new idol group, B. Komachi. And with that, our episode ends. And what a fun episode we had today, guys. It was just fun. That's all there is to it. It was just a fun time. It, look how much I'm grinning. I enjoyed it. They killed it with this episode. Our next couple episodes are probably going to be a bit more serious. So it's fun. It's a good thing that we got a more fun, lighthearted episode today. As we see the birth of the new B. Komachi and the start of our reality dating show arc. I would love to hear your guys' comments down below, because again, they killed this episode. They didn't have to extend the dance scene, but they did, and I'm really happy they did. It was great. <laughs> oh, man. I Again, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on the episode down below, because Oshinoko has been killing it, and will continue to kill it for the rest of the season. So until next time, guys, I hope you guys have a great day, week, month, and year. And until then, deuces, have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys next time. Deuces.